Hi and welcome to Sunday Crafternoon with Mr. Crafty Man. You can find all of our videos here each Sunday with a different craft project or you can go to my website at www.mrcraftyman.com So what we're going to be working on today is we're going to do coffee mugs, sublimation coffee mugs. And you can't just buy any old plain coffee mug to do this. Um, what I do is I either go to jpplus.com and buy my uh, sublimation blanks there, or if you go on to amazon.com and just type sublimation blanks into the search box, um, if you do that you're going to come up with every single item that they have that you can do sublim uh, sublimation on, or just type in um, coffee mug sublimation blanks. And these have got a special coating on them, like a polyester coating. Sublimation um, generally uh, only works on uh, polyester or polyester coated items. Um, there's a spray that you can buy for things that are not polyester, and you can spray it on it, wait for it to dry, and do uh, sublimation projects on it also. So what we're going to do with this particular mug is I've already printed out uh, the design that I would like on my iColor 560 back there. And the iColor 560, when you buy it, it comes with uh, heat transfer toner inside of it. It's, a, it's called a white toner printer. And if you want to be able to do sublimation with it, you've got to purchase the sublimation die cartridges. Well, the set of those is pretty pricey. It's $1,695, but there's quite a bit that you can do with it. You can do a lot more projects with those than you can with uh, the toner. And, and don't get me wrong, I like the toner too, but there's just so many things that you can make with the sublimation die. <laughs> so, what we've got here, um, I'm an uh, army veteran, so I like to, to make mugs for myself and for my friends. Uh, what I did is I, I printed a few of these out in, on sheets, and I cut them out. Now, you can notice that I did not cut along the lines. Like, on, uh, on the circle here, I didn't cut, like, right on the circle. You're probably wondering why I I didn't cut along the lines. The reason why is we've got to pull this off of the mug after uh, after it's finished baking here in our uh, mug press. And if you've done it on the lines, anything here that has the sublimation dye on it is going to stick to that mug. So it's really hard working on something that's almost 400 degrees trying to get your fingers under there trying to scrape it up so since the the corners here don't have any dye on them it's very easy to pull them up to to get the sticker off and this is a hot pull so you don't wait for this to cool before you pull it off if you're waiting you're gonna have some trouble um, you're gonna be having to stick it in water and trying to scrub paper off of it and on this other one here, I did the same thing. I left some edges on there. I've learned my lesson. I have cut along the lines before, and it didn't work out so well. So this mug, the measurements of it, it's four inches high, and it's like nine inches around. So if you're doing a mug wrap, then uh, you would want it to be four by nine inches. Um, something else that you're going to need for this is this heat tape. So... I've got a roll of it here. I've already pre-cut a few strips of it and stuck it to the side of my work table over here. But what I'm going to do is I will take my first picture here. I'm going to hold it there and I'll take a, a strip of tape and I'm going to tape it down right along the edge just like that. And you can't use regular tape for this. It just doesn't work. And you also want to make sure this is tight and you don't have any uh, you don't have any creases or 
or wrinkles inside of it. And this here is one of my one of my favorite projects to do are these coffee mugs. They're just a lot of fun. I really like them. So I'm going to put this piece of tape down there. Then I'm going to pull it tight. Get my next piece of tape. And the tape doesn't have to be fancy or anything like that. You're just holding your design on there, keeping it from moving. So I've got it on this side here. Now I'm going to stick it on this side. And something else you want to make sure that you're doing is make sure that you have your design right side up. I did one of these before and I wasn't paying attention and I had the mug upside down so my entire design was upside down and it kind of kind of ruined it. I, I mean you could still drink out of it but I figured I was just going to throw it away. Alright, now something I want to mention, I'm using a Cricut mug press here. And with the Cricut mug press, you don't have to worry about setting the temperature on it. Um, the Cricut mug press sets the temperature on itself. But if you're using, I don't know if you can see it back here, if you're using one of the, the mug presses like this that comes with like the swing design press, that one there you do have to set the temperature on. You set it at about 380, 385. And uh, you're going to have your mug in there for about three minutes. Um, something about the about the the sublimation die is the longer you leave it on there, the more vibrant it's going to set in. So I typically leave uh, I typically leave it in there for probably about four minutes. So the reason why I have two mug presses, in case you're wondering, is the Swing Design mug press. Uh, I was using and it was giving me issues. While we're we're heating this mug, I'll show you what kind of issues I'm talking about. But the swing design one or the cricket one is really neat. We just set our mug in here. It's warning me that it wants to shut off if I don't use it. So we set our mug inside of here and then we push this down. And I'm going to look at my watch. It looks like it's probably about five minutes after. Or six minutes after. So at about uh, nine or ten after, we'll pull it out of there. So while that's baking, I want to explain to you why, um, why I've got two different presses. So I was using the Swing Design Press and you can see in the center here the colors look great but as you get down to the bottom and up here on some of the edges you can see where it's much lighter and that's because the heat press or the mug press that i was using had cold spots on it it was not heating evenly so we've got these light areas and then also right along the edge here and along the edge here we were having that same issue. Um, and this one here, you can see really light down there also. This was one I made for my wife with her name on it and, and some little birds. And this one that I have right here, I just had my name on it and like some fall leaves. Now, this mug that I have right here, I made this one here, and you can also notice that it seems to be shinier than the uh, the other press for some reason. This one here I did using the Cricut mug press, and I put a uh, an army seal on it, and then on the other side I have a, a fist seal, and what that is is fire support team, 13 Fox, uh, that was what my MOS was in the the army was 13 Fox. Something uh, something else here. As you're doing mugs, some people um, will tell you to use Subliclean, and let me show you what that is. And Subliclean is something that that you would use on 
just about anything you were doing sublimation on in a hard surface, it looks almost like it's a, a saran wrap. So you would pull it off and you would wrap it around whatever you were going to, to put your design on. Then you put your design on over the subliquin. And I know that sounds really, really weird. I mean, how is the the dye from well the sublimation dye gonna make it through this plastic wrap and onto the mug I don't know how it does it but it does do it um, so this this here works really well another item that they have let me grab it here and I keep this in a little bag here just so it won't uh, it won't spill anywhere this here is called sublimation toner cleaner for hard surfaces. So you don't have to have the subliquin and this uh, this cleaner here. You can have one or the other. I bought them both so I could try them out. The, the sublimation cleaner here, the liquid seems to be a little easier to use. Um, once your project is finished, then you go ahead and and uh, get a paper towel or something and douse it in this cleaner, and then you rub it down. Um, if you were using the Subla Clean here, like the plastic wrap, what happens is it tends to melt a little bit, so then you're you're left picking plastic substrate off of your mug or whatever it is that you're working on. We've got just about another minute until our mug is ready. Give me a second and I'll be right back. I've got to grab something that I forgot. Sorry about that. I had to grab a paper towel that we can use to clean this up. So we should be about ready here. So let's go ahead and take our mug out of here and then quickly, while it's still hot, we've got to take to peel these off. Remember, it's a hot peel and that is hot. So let's get the tape off and pull up the paper. Peel that back. Looks great. Let's get the other one before it starts to cool. Wow, that's hot. And uh, they sell a glove that you can use, but you can't get a grip on this with the glove. Okay. And we've got that peeled back. Okay. So what they recommend for this is that as soon as you have as soon as you've peeled it, then you would run it under warm water to stop the process. So give me just a minute. I will run it under the water and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have, what, it, what I like to do, it says to put it in warm water, and I'm sure that's just so it won't crack. So what I do is I start it out in warm water, and then once I can, once I can touch the mug and it's not hot, then I, I turn the water to cold and start filling. I've got this like in a bowl, and I start filling up with cold water until it's, it's uh, cool to the touch. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to take a paper towel here and if if you run your hands across this you can feel it slightly grainy in some spots so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little paper towel here and fold it up and I'm going to take some of this um, Uninet STC9 eye color sublimation toner cleaner for hard surfaces and I ordered this directly, I, I believe I got it from uh, jpplus.com, Johnson Plastics. And it doesn't take a lot, but I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to, to start rubbing. And you can see there's a little bit of darkness coming off on there.
that's feeling a little bit smoother. And I like to flip my paper towel over for the for the other side of the mug so I can see exactly what all is coming off and then I'll start wiping it down. And what I do once I'm finished with this, this has got kind of a, a little bit of a nasty chemical type smell to it. I normally take it into the sink and I'll wash it off with dish soap and dry it and then uh, it's all ready to go. So this is our finished project here. And it turned out very well. The colors are vibrant. Um, the uh, toner cleaner here that got a little bit of a little bit of dark stuff off of it and now it's pretty smooth to the touch and it's also shiny. So that was our project for today. Subscribe and check back on next Sunday for Sunday Crafternoon with Mr. Crafty Man. It was great having you here. See you then.